Hello and welcome to this video on uh, S2 Chapter 6, Populations and Samples. Uh, this is the second video on this chapter, and in this video we're looking at a few things. The first thing is uh, simple random sampling, what that means. Uh, then we're looking at population parameters and st statistics, the uh, difference between a population parameter and a statistic. And then the last thing to cap it all off, we'll look quickly at what a sampling distribution is. Um, and in the next video after this one, we'll look more closely at calculating sample distributions, which will be more interesting, I'm sure. Um, so if any of those things interest you, then uh, this is the video for you. Um, the first thing to talk about then is what a simple random sample is. Now, sampling is um, difficult, um, mostly because getting a sample that's not biased is obviously desirable um, and, and sometimes quite hard to do. Simple random samples are... They're by definition really not biased. And the way you ensure it's not biased is to make sure that each of your sampling units, each individual in your population, has an equal chance of being picked. Which sounds like an obvious idea, but it turns out to be quite hard to do sometimes in practice. Um, say you're trying to do a survey of um, people in your firm. Um, if you just ask people to take part in the survey, the simple act of some people saying, yeah, I'll do that, versus people going, no, I don't want to do that, actually uh, may cause bias in your sample, because why do some people want to answer the question, some people don't, maybe there's something different about their characters, maybe it's going to affect your results. Um, so sometimes it's actually subtly difficult to get a random sample. Uh, you've got to force people to do the survey, which you know, has perhaps some um, problems in itself. Anyway, so let's talk about uh, one way of getting a random sample is uh, to take a sampling frame, take your list of all your employees, say at a firm and their payroll numbers, and to randomly pick um, you know, a certain number of them, 100 say. So you get a sample of the size of 100. Um, that would be a random sample. Uh, you need a sampling frame to make sure it's truly random. If you just pick people um, that you happen to meet, it's not the same thing as giving each person an equal probability. For example, if you um, were trying to ask people um, what their favourite TV show was and you went out on the streets and asked the first 100 people you see, uh, it's not really a, a good sample of, say, the whole population of the UK because you've got more chance of meeting people that live in your town or live near you than you have of meeting people that live very far away from you. Um, so that's not really a true um, random sample. You need them just of everyone and to pick them from that. Anyway. Let's look at um, a population here. Let's have this population be uh, the ages of people in a firm. So X is the age of the employee, of the employees at the firm. Um, and you've got here all the employees. Presumably the sample is, you know, the distribution is like this. So that there's more people that are clustered around the mean age. And then there's less older people and less young people. Uh, this is the probability density function, the PDF for the ages of employees of this firm. Um, it looks like it's a normal distribution here. I don't know if that's a, a real uh, good way of affecting how old people are actually at a firm or not, but it would do for now. Um, a sample then would be a list of different ages. So you go and you take the people on your on your list of randomly generated people and you find the age of the first person and the age of the second person and the age of the third person and keep going until you get to the nth person, um, maybe it's a hundred people, maybe it's a thousand people, I don't know how big your sample's going to be. This is a sample of size n. Each of these x's is an age, a number. Also, each of these x is, is a number that I'm not sure what it is, so each of them uh, is an independent random variable. They're independent if the sample uh, size is small compared to population size. So if the population is large, there's that word again, it means selecting one person from the sample, from, selecting one person from, from the population doesn't really make a difference to the distribution of the population. So if you've got like thousands of people in your employees and you're going to set hundreds from them, then you're not going to really change the distribution. You don't got to worry about the fact once you've picked one person, it affects, you know, how likely it is to pick another person of the same age uh, if the population is huge. So we're going to assume they're independent because the population is large. Uh, each of these XIs is then independent random variables. And importantly, they have the same distribution 
as the population. What we mean is the chance, the probability of picking um, a person of mean age is obviously going to be higher than the chance of picking someone of a lot older age or a lot younger age. Um, so if you look at this sample, it's likely that more of these numbers are around the mean age and that uh, less of these numbers are really old and really uh, young. There's the same chance of picking a person of an age as the population is. That's because you pick them at random because you pick them with equal probability of uh, each X being selected. If your sample is biased, then this wouldn't be true, because it would be, say, more chance of picking an older person or more chance of picking a younger person, um, because of how you select your sample. OK, so we've got a sample. We know that each of these exercises are um, distributed in the same way as the um, original sample. That's going to come and play in the next video when we look at um, trying to do this in practice. Let's talk about what population parameters are. Um, and statistics. So usually when you take a sample, it's because you're interested in finding something out about the population. That's what we mean by population parameters, a, a characteristic that we're interested in. So a characteristic of the population which you can measure. So like a number. So often this could be like, say, the mean or the standard deviation or the variance. They're the kind of things we're looking at normally in this uh, S2 chapter. So, for example, here we might want to know what the mean age of our population is, what the mean age of these employees is. Or maybe what the standard deviation is of the ages are or the variance of these ages are. That's the kind of thing we're looking for. Uh, these things can often be quite hard to calculate uh, because the population could be very, very large and therefore, you know, Doing a census would be very time consuming, so instead we do a sample and hope that the sample we can use to sort of approximate or work out what the mean is. Um, this is where statistics come into play. See, a statistic is a quantity which can be calculated solely just from the data of the sample. So it's basically numbers you can calculate using just these numbers x1 to xn. So for example, if we worked out the mean of the sample, that would be a uh, statistic. Uh, usually, not always, but usually these are approximations to the population parameters. I say, prop I say um approximations because it's not going to be likely that the mean of the sample you calculated is going to be exactly the same as the mean of the population but hopefully hopefully it's close hopefully the mean of the uh, sample is near the uh, the mean population that's and that's what we call a statistic it's basically by saying statistic you're indicating that you don't know the exact you don't know exactly what the mean is but this is the uh, statistical mean um now, if you took different samples, it's likely that you'll get slightly different means. Um, and this gives us a sampling distribution. So let's say we took many different samples. And each time calculated the statistic. In this case, the mean, but it could be uh, other things as well. So, for example, the mean of the sample. It's likely that sometimes we'll get a slightly higher mean and sometimes a slightly lower mean. Um, if we call this mean M, then we get a probability density function for this mean. So say quite often this mean is about this number and then less frequently it's a bit bigger or a bit smaller. Maybe we get a, a distribution a bit like that where it's more likely for the mean to be here and less likely for the mean to be there. And then hopefully this is one where it's most commonly uh, this value. Hopefully this is actually the population parameter mu. So by doing several different samples we can work out what the sampling distribution is and therefore guess at or deduce what the actual uh, population parameter, what the actual real mean is by looking at our sampling distribution. Uh, in the next video we can actually try and do these things in practice um, and then see what these words mean for real uh, example. So I encourage you to watch that video almost straight away to try and see how these words come into play in a real, um, real question.